Hello and welcome to Tuesday's math session. So today we are going to be carrying on with how to find fractions of amounts. It's going to get a little bit harder. We're going to do some um, worded problems. We might have to think about it a little bit differently than what we did yesterday. But as a starter, could you please pause the video and find one fifth of 105? Okay, so how at, what we looked at yesterday was that to find a fraction of amount, we divide the whole number by the denominator and then times that answer by the numerator. So we would do how many fives Ooh, go into 105 first of all, because we're dividing the whole number by the denom denominator. So we'd go how many fives go into one? None. So then I'm carrying my one over. How many fives go into 10? two, how many fives go into five, one, and then, so that would be our first step, so 105 divided by five, and then we would times it by the numerator, but the numerator is only one, so that is our final answer, so our final answer is one fifth of 105 is 21, so give yourself a tick if you got that one right. Okay, we're going to look at it a little bit differently today. So what we're going to look at first of all is what if we know the fraction but not the whole? So we know that one quarter of something is eight. Now, you might be looking already and know how you would do this, but we're going to talk it through anyway. So we are doing this. Uh, to sort of the opposite way to how we would work out our first question, so one fifth of 105, because we've got a missing number here in the middle. So instead of going this number divided by this number times this number to get this number, the number that we've got is the answer at the end, so we've got eight. Now to work out what the missing number is, we need to do the opposite, so we need to do the inverse to find out this missing number. So Instead of doing um, eight times one, which is the last step we do, we are going to do eight divided by one, okay? So we're going to do it backwards. Now I know that eight divided by one is still going to be eight, okay? Now usually uh, we are dividing um, this by this number by the bottom, um, so we're going to do the opposite of that. So instead of timesing this number by the top, we divided it. So instead of um, dividing this number by the bottom, we are going to times this number by the bottom. So we've got our 8 divided by 1, which is 8. So we've done the inverse. So we haven't done um, timesing by the top, we've done dividing by the top. And we would usually divide by the bottom, but we're doing the inverse, so we're going to times by the bottom. So we take our 8 and we would times it by the bottom. So we do 8 times 4, which is going to give us ooh, 32. And that is our final answer because we've worked backwards. Now, if I put my 32 in here, there's one way that I can check. So... I can then do it the right way around. So I do 32 divided by 4, and then I would times that number by 1. And if you've got the right number here, you should get 8 as your answer. So you do everything backwards from the answer at the back, okay? So we're going to have a go at this. So 1 third of 18. I want you to pause the video and have a go at that. So that's straightforward how you would usually um, work that out. So one third of 18. Okay, so we know from yesterday, we divide the whole number by the denominator. So we do 18 divided by three, which will give us six. And then we've got six. So that answer times the numerator. So six times one is six. So this number should have been, so one third of 18 is six. Now, to work out one third of something equals 18, we do what we just did a second ago and we're going to work backwards. So we're going to take 18 
and we are going to, instead of timesing it by the numerator, we're going to divide it by the numerator. So 18 divided by 1, which is 18 anyway. And then we take our answer like we would for this one. So we take whatever answer we've got here. And instead of dividing it by the numerator, we are going to times it by the numerator. So we've got 18 times 3. And that is going to give us 54. Okay. And again, to check that you're right, you can take it the right way around. So you can do 54 divided by 3 times 1 should give you 18. So hopefully that's a little bit clearer on how you'd go backwards to work it out, um, seeing them side by side. So you do the opposite. So you work backwards from the thing that you would do last um, if you were doing it the normal way through and you invert it. So if you're dividing, you times. If you times, you divide. Okay, so what I want you to do is have a go. So pause the video and have a go at doing these questions and then we're going to go through them together, but really give it a good go. Um, think about how we've just done it. Um, have a look at this one because it's just worded differently round the other way. It's the same sort of idea. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, so for the first question, hopefully you've got 30 as an answer. So we're working backwards. So we've got two thirds of something equals 20. So we're going to work backwards. So instead of timesing this number by the top, we're going to divide the answer by the top because we're inverting it. So then we do 20 divided by 2, which would give us 10. Then we take this 10 and instead of dividing it by the bottom, we times it by the top bo bottom. Um, and so we've got 10 times 3 equals 30. So 2 thirds of 30 equals 20. A way to check is to do it the right way around. So we've got 30 divided by 3 would give you 10 times 2 would give you 20. So we know we've got the right answer because we have ended up uh, with the answer 20 that is printed there for us. OK, and for the second one, hopefully you have got four tenths of 200. Now, even though this question is written a different way round, it means exactly the same as this. So if I move to this, four tenths of 200 equals 80. So it's exactly the same. It's just moved the numbers around a bit to trick you. So you should have done the exact same method that you did for the first one. So we've got 80 and we're going to divide it by 4 instead of timesing it by 4, which would give us 20. And then we're going to take that 20 and instead of dividing it by the bottom, we're going to times it by the bottom, which gives us 200. So 4 tenths of 200 is 80. If you do it the normal way around to double check your answer, so 200 divided by 10 times by 4, you should get 80. So hopefully you managed to get those two right. Give yourself a tick if you did. OK, now we're going to move on to have a look at some word problems. Now, this is exactly the same as what we've just looked at, but it's written a little bit differently. So Mo spent five eighths. So five eighths is the fraction of the amount that we're working on of his money on a new bike. Now, it doesn't tell you how much. Oh, it doesn't tell you how much money he had. It just says his money. So he's got he spent five eighths of a mystery number and he spent 75 pounds okay so with a word question you just need to work out uh what numbers it's giving you and which um order that you need to do them in so five eighths of his money it doesn't tell us how much money he had um, was £75 and the question is asking you how much money he had in the beginning. So all you're working out is five eighths of something equals £75, which is what we've just done in the previous slide. So what I want you to do is pause the video and have a really good go at working it out and then come back when you are ready and you think you've got it. OK, so we're working this out exactly the same as we did on the last one. So we're using the inverse to get that missing number. So the first thing I need to do, instead of timesing by 5, I'm going to divide my 75 by 5. So I've got how many 5s go into 7? 1. How many do I have left over? 2. How many 5s go into 25? 5. Okay, so I've got 15. And then the next thing I need to do instead is take this number, so 15. And instead of dividing by 8, I'm going to times by 8.
So we've got how many fives go into eight? 40. How many? Eight, eight times one. So we've got eight. Add our four. Oh, here's 120. So I know that he had 120 pounds to begin with. So if I do five eighths of 120 pounds and I do 120 divided by eight times by five, it should get me 75 and I know that I am right. Okay, final question then. So in a flower shop, seven twelfths of the tulips are red. So we've got seven twelfths of, it doesn't tell us how many tulips we've had, we've got, so we've got the exact same problem. So seven twelfths of something um, are, is 56. So seven twelfths of the total amount of tulips are red and there are 56 red tulips. Then it asks you how many tulips are there in total. So if 56 are red and 56 is seven twelfths. How many tulips do they actually have? So again, you do exactly the same thing that we just did on the bike question, on the money question. So you're going to work backwards. So pause the video and have a go at doing this question backwards. Okay, so hopefully you have got the answer 96. So here's how we should have done it. So 56, and instead of timesing by seven, we've divided by seven, which would give us eight. And we've taken our eight, and we've, instead of dividing that by 12, we've timesed it by 12 to get us 96. And again, to double check that your answer is right, you do 96 divided by 12, times it by seven, and if you get 56, you are definitely on the right track. Okay, that's all from me today. So now is your time to go onto the worksheets on the website and have a go at applying this new skill. If this is really, really tripping you up, then I would suggest you go for the easier sheet on the website. Start with that. If you find it too easy, you can move up. But um, if you're thinking it's going to trip you up, then start there.